welcome back everybody it's uh friday it's a whole uh week after i recorded that other video and uh basically we're gonna pick up right where we left off i think last time when uh if i remember correctly i haven't even edited the other video so i can't remember where we, where we left off in the video i know that what i did was i put the uh, I put the differential in there with the uh, roller bearing roller bearing upgrade. Um, as you can see right here, and uh, so basically, <clears throat> I was having issues getting the case to close, and the reason for that was because I forgot to take these guys out. So I was trying to close the case with these guys in. I looked over the instructions one last time, and I seen where it said to take these out. So once I took those out, the case closed up. So case is completely closed up. I did. I was able to extract that broken screw in there. So now I've got three brand new screws. I Oof, thank God got loctite i've got everything that i need and so we're gonna make this video real short and quick i'm basically just gonna go ahead and uh show you guys how to assemble this thing back together now that we've seen how it comes apart in case any of y'all are wondering um yes we are in my bedroom yes i am doing this inside yes there's car parts over here uh like i said in my last video that's my old motorcycle helmet from when i used to ride which i don't anymore um and then these are all parts for like other projects that i have coming up on the channel that i'll be recording soon got another differential for something else extra integra tail lights bunch of other stuff in here these are just parts for upcoming projects that i don't want to be going back and forth to and from the storage and whatnot so anyways here's the lower casing differential is installed with the roller bearing as you can see look at how smooth that spins um compared to like the taper bearings you spin that and it like immediately stops almost like if somebody hits the brakes but uh yeah so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and take the uh <clears throat> the stacks that i have in this box here and we're gonna go ahead and drop those in guys really clean so it's not going to dirty anything that's one thing that i made sure to do before i brought everything into my room obviously i uh, cleaned everything really good with like air and uh brake cleaner that way i wouldn't have any kind of like oil deposits or anything like that in here regardless of the fact i'm still putting things on the ground um like that green uh box cover just to uh make sure that i don't get anything on my tiles Stacks. Here we have the other stack. Those go somewhat like that. And then here we've got our forks. Perfect. So what I like to do, I just bring my stacks together like that. You know you have the forks on right if all three of these pieces are lined up correctly. And then what I do is I just lift the whole thing one assembly like this. I had to cut some of the uh, recording because I ended up having some trouble with the forks and I forgot to put the washers that are under there. So I put everything in here and then I remembered the washers. I had to take it out. Then this stack ended up falling apart. I pieced everything back together, put the forks and everything in place. And now everything is where it should be. And this is what I was saying. If you look here, everything is lined up where it should be. So that's all set and ready to go. So now the next part is going to be... It's actually relatively simple 
and it goes right around the back side here. And that's going to be this guy, which is your reverse gear. So now, as I mentioned in one, the last video, I believe, this only goes in one way. It's got that little dowel there. So little dowel goes in that little spacer there. And this is just going to, let me see. That's just going to drop in place right there just like that. So basically when you engage reverse, it catches on these teeth here and it'll be in gear. Now for the reverse, we got these two screws that look like this. And then you've got this guy here, which is basically your reverse selector. So, If you look on the side here, there's two little holes there where a little detent ball sits. So this is the selected position when you're in reverse. That's not in reverse. So you want it not in reverse. And then all you do is you just pick up on the gear here and then make sure that that sits there. You also have that piece there that needs to get lined up there that's basically when you move your shink lift uh your uh linkage into reverse that's what selects it for you this little guy drops in here moves that fork down <coughs> so yeah make sure you have your reverse sitting up in that position there this guy's lined up and then you're gonna take your first screw introduce that right in there then your second screw and introduce that guy right in here and then you're gonna get yourself your 10 and your ratchet well run them down first So it would probably go a lot faster if I had an extension. <coughs> but, uh, uh... I'm so tired, I don't even want to, like, walk out to my car right now. So... I'm just gonna have to endure it. Don't want to stretch them too much because if not, then you're, you're going to end up with uh, the exact issue that we had earlier. All right, so now for this next part, I was looking for uh, my Loctite because I thought I had found my Loctite. Well, I did find my Loctite. I just don't know what I did with it now. So, let me see. Oh, it's going to be a little confusing because this thing is all disassembled. Alright, so this is my selector that was moving here. We got screws for that. Now, let's see if I remember this. Basically, goes here like this. That piece, I don't know if you can see that, but that piece sits right in there like that. like that and then what goes here let me see here something's not lined up oh you have this other piece right here so this needs to sit centered with your shifter there and then this guy goes right here like this and then it should just sit there like that 
Now, what I'm gonna do before I put a bolt in, there's another piece that sits in here. It's the actual like selector mechanism. This thing is kind of a pain to get in one piece. So you got this guy, this piece, this basically goes right there. If you remember kindergarten, all the uh, all the shapes go together. So let's see here. So I know this guy sits in here like this. This little guy comes out like that. So this is what's gonna sit. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll move the camera around and show you here in a second. So that guy goes right there like that. This is gonna go inside of this guy like that. So you should end up with an assembly that looks like that, basically. Okay, now down here, you got this arm here. So that arm there is gonna go into this gap right here. And then you've got a hole in the bottom there. So your shaft is gonna end up basically right there. I know a bunch of you are gonna murder me either in the comments or as you're watching this, you're probably saying to yourself, pause. Y'all know who you are. Alrighty. There you go, y'all. So it should look something like that. You should have that piece lined up there. This guy's gonna be going in there. That's gonna be sitting like that. And then you take this whole assembly of this dude and you just kind of bring it in here like this. You can lift up on these guys a little bit. Not gonna lie to you, it's a little challenging trying to do trying to do this like this, but it is doable. Just be patient. You'll 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 figure it out. You'll get it sorted. Oh, and it also helps if uh make sure that everything is in neutral. Once these guys are lined up, then you know you're in neutral. So All right, so there we go. We are right where we need to be. You can see. So that guy's, these holes are basically lined up here. That guy's right there where it needs to be. This guy's right there where it needs to be. That's right there where it needs to be. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Make sure that this thing is sitting flush. Look down here, see, mine's not sitting flush. So if you look right here, it's not flush. Now we're sitting flush. So just pay real close attention to that. And then if there's one more tip that I could give you guys, cause this killed me on my first transmission. You see how these things don't really line up? You're gonna hear a lot of people tell you like, oh, that's gotta be lined up. It's gotta be perfectly lined up. They never gonna perfectly line up. You can sit here and lift and you can mess with it and this and that. You're probably gonna end up popping the bearing off the top of the shaft trying to sit there and make sure that them things line up. Trust me, once you get that thing in there, it's, it's in there. You'll be all right. All right, so just to update, I had to step out and go buy a, uh, a bolt set because the bolt set I got for me is hardware. Um, it's just a little too short. I think this is like eight mil because I have a 10 mil here in this pack and if you see it side by side, the uh, 10 mil is a little bit longer. Now, it could be because of the differences in the head. I'm not really sure, but even the threaded part looks longer. And this is definitely 10 mil. But um, so what I didn't account for is that this plate is like either an eighth or like a quarter inch thick. It's pretty thick. So it wasn't like it wasn't like uh, reaching through. So I went to O'Reilly's. I had to get a, I had to get a, uh, I had to get a seal. I had to get axle seals because my axle seals actually turned like rock solid. I don't know if I could find a. Oh, I actually got it holding up the transmission. 
But um, so yeah, I think it was like rock solid. And I think that's why I was having an oil leak from there. So I went and got two brand new uh, axle seals. I went and got some oil for the transmission. Also got some power steering fluid because I had ran out um, from what I have on the shelf because I like to keep fluids and stuff uh, on my shelf here. And uh, yeah, so I just got back, put the two, the I put two new bolts here. I used one of the old flange bolts in there and this thing is now rock solid. It's not going anywhere. It's gonna shift. It's gonna do everything that it needs to do. None of these bolts are gonna back out. And we're hopefully not gonna have any more problems because I really don't wanna do this a 14th time. But who's counting? Not me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead. You guys saw the uh, breakdown process of this transmission. Um, I showed you guys um, the whole roller bearing conversion. Um, I showed you guys how to put the stacks in with the forks and all that stuff. I showed you guys how that goes together, the reverse gear and all that stuff. Pretty much the only thing that goes on after this is just your silicone. You go ahead and you get your silicone and you put a nice generous bead around the casing of the transmission here. You take your upper casing, you put that on top here. Now, when you go to set it down, it's gonna kind of fight you to sit into place. You need to get a flathead or something and you need to play with the shifter. As you start moving the shifter back and forth, the casing is gonna drop the rest of the way. And then before you try to bolt it, very important, do not try to bolt it until you get the snap ring back up on this bearing. Just like how I showed you guys to take it out, this time what you need to do is once you put that casing in, you go ahead and you spread the snap ring. And with a flat head, you grab this little groove here, you pull up on it, and when you pull up on this, the snap ring will seat down. And uh, then after that, you can go ahead and bolt it down. Because what's going to happen is if you bolt this down without pulling that snap ring on, without pulling that snap ring up, you're going to damage the snap ring and you can, you can break the casing. Ask me how I know. So make sure once you put the casing on here, do not bolt it in. Make sure that you get the snap ring secured onto this bearing here. And after that, go ahead and set up your uh, go ahead and set up your uh, your bolts and everything, tighten everything up, and then the last thing after that is gonna be your detent bolts, which go on the bottom of the casing. Those detents make contact against this for when you're shifting, and then the last one goes at the very top here. That's gonna be your reverse bolt, and like I showed you, that's gonna end up going into your reverse shaft that's on the back side here. Uh, very important that you don't forget those and then also make sure you always double check everything fill plugs drain plugs everything double check everything make sure it's nice and snug nice and tight um so you're not leaking oil out of your transmission but uh yeah so it's gonna be a short video this is pretty much gonna be it just the uh, reverse assembly of this transmission um, I was trying to put this transmission in tonight but the Florida weather is being really crappy it's raining and it's cold outside so um, I'm just going to go ahead and finish assembling this and we're just going to let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow morning, hopefully it's sunny. Hopefully it's a much better looking day. And, uh, I'll go ahead and start getting the transmission in and we'll go ahead and record some of that. It's probably just going to be a lot of goofing around because you guys will see me put clutches and transmissions on like so many motors right now. It's, it's kind of pointless. So, uh, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and close out the video right here. You got anything to add? Nothing at all. Not really, at least not right this second. No, I'm dying to have this thing up and running again. <laughs> Gotta have both cars running. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it. Um, and uh, so we'll just go ahead and catch you guys on the next one. Dive right in.